A lot of beginning gardeners start out their gardens wanting to do everything as organically as possible, especially when it comes to pests. But what I've learned over the years is something I don't really think a lot of people are talking about, and that is really working on your pest problems is more than just switching out chemical insecticides for organic ones. There's actually a lot more to it in order to have a diverse, thriving ecosystem where you don't don't have to spray as much, if any, as you might think, even organic. So what I want to do today is tell you 10 pieces of advice that I would give beginning gardeners or gardeners who are starting to switch into a more organic method of pest control, just to give you kind of a big picture. This goes beyond what can you spray and more to what your big goals are going to be. My first piece of advice is don't sweat the small stuff. Most of the insects and the pests that you see in your garden are not going to destroy your crops. In fact, most of the insects that you see in your garden are either doing good for you or they're not bothering one way or the other. They have a role to play, but they're not actually eating your crops. Now there are some pest insects that obviously are eating your crops or they are damaging them in some way, but most of them are not going to do catastrophic damage. I think a big mistake that I see beginners make is they just panic as soon as they see one insect that they either don't know what it is or they've identified it as a pest and they don't realize that not everything is going to cause catastrophic damage. So my first piece of advice is try not to sweat the small stuff in the beginning. A lot of this is going to come by observation and seeing like how much is this this pest actually damaging my crop? What can I do? And if you see just one or two pests, don't just start spraying out of control. Don't sweat the small stuff in the beginning. Number 2, focus on plant health. Stressed plants are more vulnerable. So focus on healthy plants, which begins with healthy soil, making sure that you're planting your plants at the right time based on the season. So that way they're not stressed from cold or stressed from heat. Also make sure they're getting the right amount of water, not too much, not too little. Just do what you can to really focus on plant health. You'll be surprised at how quickly pest insects will gravitate toward the unhealthy plants. So if you'll focus on plant health, you'll definitely set yourself up to not having the catastrophic damage. I'm not saying it's never going to happen because it definitely can, but for the most part, really focus on the plant's health because they can be a lot more resilient than than you think. Number 3, you're probably seeing on the internet or maybe you're looking it up all these different homemade sprays, homemade organic sprays that you can spray your plants if you see aphids or other insects on your plants. And some of those can actually work well, but if you follow a homemade spray, please test it on a leaf and just see and make sure that that spray isn't too strong. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is you get online and you get a recipe for a homemade insecticidal soap that uses dish soap, right? No, no, no. You don't want to use dish soap because dish soap has detergent in it most likely. What you'll want to do instead is use a gentle soap like a castile soap. I've done that before. I showed you how I did this in this video where I talk about organic um, aphid control methods. Definitely use a mild soap without a detergent. I've seen more than I care to tell you about how many people have used these homemade sprays and they've sprayed them on their plants and the plant's leaf just couldn't handle it, especially if they use dish detergent. So be very careful if you have any kind of homemade spray, test it first because you don't want to damage your plant while you're trying to save your plant because that's just going to be very discouraging. Number four, Covers are your friend. I'm talking about insect netting primarily. Floating row covers can work too, but floating row covers are mainly for trapping in heat and extending your season in the early spring and, and in the late fall and into the winter. But when you're getting into a warmer period, insect netting is actually my favorite choice. I'll link below to the one that I use because it allows air, it allows water, it allows 100% of the light, but what it does is it excludes the moths of many of your pests that lay eggs like the squash vine borer and also the cabbage worm, and it can also exclude other pests like 
beetles like squash bugs and things like that, that that get on your plants, it will exclude those as long as they're not already in the soil. So if you're practicing crop rotation, most likely um, you'll be able to add that cover to your crop and prevent those insects from getting into your crop. This can work in a variety of ways. Like I said, any kind of cabbage worm, this is my favorite thing to exclude the cabbage worm moth from laying eggs on my brassicas. These covers will make a huge difference. So get to know how to use these insect netting covers to protect your plants, especially when they're young and vulnerable from some of these pest insects. Number five, even when using organic controls, always understand the risks to bees, pollinators, toads, wildlife, um, aquatic life, all of those things. Because just because it's organic doesn't mean it's safe. It doesn't mean it's not toxic to some of the things that you really do want in your garden. And you don't wanna kill things without knowing what you're doing. You don't wanna just trade your, your chemical insecticide for an organic one and think that you're being safe about it. There are some organic controls that are safe generally for most of your pollinators, but there are some that you either want to avoid if you can, or make sure that you don't spray them around flowers or in the morning when the pollinators are active. You just wanna understand that there are risks to some of these organic insecticides. In my workshop, The Beginner's Guide to Organic Pest Control, if you're watching this live, it's actually coming up on May the 3rd of 2022. If you're watching this later, we're converting it to a mini course so you can still have access to that. Just check the link in the show notes for the latest information. I'm gonna be going through each of these organic insecticides that you might wanna consider. And I'll also be talking about the risks to different things, like which ones are a little bit safer, which ones you wanna be really careful with. But just understand that just because something is labeled as organic doesn't mean it's safe for everything in your garden. Number seven, beware of very well-intentioned people who give advice on the internet. And this is something that I've seen mostly in fantastic Facebook groups and communities where people are asking locally in particular, what can I do for this particular insect? Because maybe, you know, you're in a locale where you're all getting hit at the same time. There are people from all different gardening philosophies that are in those groups, a lot of them have been using inorganic insecticides for decades and they have not seen any issues with that. So they'll say, I've been using it for years and no problem, but beware of that kind of advice. Always double check any advice that you get from people, especially, I mean, I'm even talking about me. I am a gardener who's been doing this for almost 10 years, but I'm not an expert. So double check me, double check everybody that gives you advice on any kind of organic pest control or anything otherwise, honestly, in gardening, but just be very careful. Do your own research. I recommend researching um, university studies. That's one thing that I did in preparing for the workshop is I want to see okay with neem oil for for instance what are the risks so i looked at university studies and in, in different extension agent services and things like that just remember that these gardening groups are your friend you can learn a whole lot but understand that if you get some advice make sure to double check it just do your own research before you apply anything to your garden and that brings me to number eight what works well in somebody else's garden may not work well in yours. So just test it. There can be a lot of things that you learn, whether that's on companion planting or trap cropping or using this organic method for this particular insect. And I'll tell you that some of the things that I have tried that other people swear has worked in their garden, it didn't work in mine. And I'm not really sure what the reason for that is, but always understand that when you get some advice, just test it to see if you see a difference in your garden. There might be various reasons why nasturtium is really not a good trap crop for aphids in my garden. I'm not really sure what it is. A lot of people say that aphids swarm to nasturtium. Aphids swarm to my peppers, generally not my, not my nasturtium. Um, so any kind of companion planting or anything like that, just make sure and test it to see if it works in your garden. On the same token, I've used certain organic insecticides that are supposed to work well for certain insects and they don't work well for mine. Don't be discouraged if you, you're using something somebody tells you works and it just doesn't. There could be a lot of reasons for that. On the same note, 
One reason I think some things haven't worked as well in my garden is that I relied on one particular application and then just expected it to fix it all because that tends to be what ends up happening with your chemical uh, non-organic insecticides. They kill on contact and then you're pretty much good for a while. Well, with a lot of these organic insecticides, they break down very rapidly. When I was researching neem oil, it could be anywhere from a couple of hours to four days that this neem oil will break down. And then eventually it's just not gonna be effective, which can be a good thing if you're talking about potential toxicity to certain things in your garden, like pollinators and things like that. But when it comes to effectiveness, if they're gonna break down a lot quicker than their inorganic counterpart, then I think that's probably too much expectation for me to expect with these organic insecticides. Most likely they would require some repeated applications and in the past, I've honestly been a little bit too lazy to do that. So just keep in mind that a one application may not completely take care of the problem. Number nine, and this is one that I really hope everybody can get a grasp of. And this is, you are hoping to build an ecosystem in your garden. An ecosystem where you've got good insects like ladybugs and lace wings and surfer flies and that's just one class of examples here that will prey on aphids and keep them in check like they do in my garden and that's just one example but you hope you have lots of beneficial insects to take care of a lot of these pest insects and so what you may do is you may research what plants should i grow to attract ladybugs or surfer flies or lace wings or whatever and that is a great place to start but understand that you're building an ecosystem and that takes time, especially if you've gone for years without using anything natural and all you've been doing is inorganic sprays, those beneficial insects don't know to come to your garden, right? Because it hasn't been a hospitable place for them. Or maybe you're starting a brand new garden and your beneficial insects don't know that there's anything for them to come to understand that it will take some time it could take a couple of years i've been doing this in an organic way for probably seven or so years and i'll tell you that each year that i have not used the chemical insecticides i've been using organic instead and even working toward not even using those i've been able to see a difference year after year in the entire ecosystem so understand that when you switch from inorganic to organic it's not going to be one to one thing you're you're building something more long lasting you're building something more beautiful more beneficial for your garden and for the planet and those type of things take time so don't expect everything to work well your first season but understand that every season that you make those changes you'll notice a difference incrementally year after year don't get discouraged it takes time but it is totally worth it and number 10 take baby steps don't get overwhelmed with all the possibilities of well i've got to switch to this organic spray and then i've got to do this companion planting and then i've got to do this trap cropping and i've got a cover and i've got a hand pick and i've got to do all this stuff don't get overwhelmed with all the things take baby steps and that's what i'm trying to lead people to do in the beginner's guide to organic pest control workshop and mini course is i've identified three levels that organic gardeners might be at from level one which is just trading your inorganic insecticides for organic knowing which ones to use which ones are going to be effective and then we go more into level two eventually which is planting crops that will attract those beneficial insects and then we go on to level three which is more advanced methods of precluding major pest outbreaks, things that you may not think of that actually can make a difference in, honestly, the whole result we wanna get in an edible garden is to have more things to eat in our gardens, right? So we all are progressing in different stages. And so if you're just a beginner, start with some of those baby steps. And if you're just watching this and you wanna start with some of those baby steps, or maybe you do want some more advanced ways to uh, progress through to be able to become more organic, then I highly recommend that you would take advantage of this workshop or the mini course whenever you're watching this. But this is gonna give you some tangible steps for you to be able to use in your garden and hopefully start transitioning and building this beautiful organic garden that pests are a part of, but they're not overrunning so that you can still have a beautiful, successful garden for your family. 
I hope you've enjoyed these tips for more how-tos. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will chat with you again on the next video.